Rasulillah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The topic today is about the fluctuation of Iman. And I'm sure that a lot of us have that. In fact, I think every one of us here would have that concern and that worry. My brothers and sisters, I'd like to begin by saying that you have nothing to worry about if your Iman goes up and down and fluctuates. Every single person goes through that. And this is something that the scholars have almost unanimously agreed upon, except for one of the scholars by the name of Abu Hanifa. And he reckons that uh, the Iman itself doesn't rise and fall, but a person moves away or comes closer. But the rest of them say the Iman itself rises and falls. Either way, they both are approximately the same meaning. People sometimes feel closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And your Iman falls sometimes. Brothers and sisters, what is Iman? Iman is a feeling inside your heart. It is a belief within your self that you feel a closeness with to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that closeness is different between one person and another. Isn't that correct? Even within yourself, there are days you feel closer, days you feel less close, and days you feel amazingly close. Some people go through a trauma or a hardship and they find themselves getting closer to Allah more than any other time they've felt in their life. And there are others who have a regular feeling of closeness just by merely hearing the Qur'an, just by merely going and praying. Some people feel a closeness in the night when everyone's asleep at a time of peace. A lot of the mothers, for example, who have children, a lot of children, they need some space sometimes. So whenever they have a peaceful moment, such as at night, it is a time for them when they feel close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes you as brothers, you're driving your car going somewhere for a business or something for your family and you're alone. You whack on, you know, a, a little, I was going to say a cassette tape that was in the olden days. Now you put on a recording or something of a lecture that reminds you of the hereafter or Jannah or hellfire or the stories of the prophets or the signs of the last hour or salat or anything like that about Allah's names and attributes or just Qur'an and you feel a closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are other times when you don't feel that close in times for example a social gathering that you have where maybe there are certain people in that gathering that are not really people who remember Allah that much and you struggle to do that sometimes you are forced to be among family members and among those family members, there are those who are not very close to Allah or those who are not practicing at all. And you are there and you have to be there. You can't just avoid and get away. In fact, you shouldn't. And you feel that your iman may sometimes be questioned and challenged a little bit. Sometimes your desires get in the way. Sometimes you feel a little bit less confident to stand out as a Muslim in front of them or as a believer. Sometimes you let things go. Sometimes your children make you a bit tired. And then you just let things go a little bit. Your iman goes down. Sometimes it goes... Um, down when, for example, there's something that your desire wants to listen to or watch or maybe you have a particular interest in something from your earlier days and it sometimes excites you. Maybe sometimes you're walking through the market and then you hear a song that reminds you of your past or something like that or it maybe lifts your spirit in a way that when I say lifts your spirit, you know what I mean by lifting your spirit in a way that is not really a way that makes you connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your iman gets affected. My brothers and sisters, there are so many things around us that continue to challenge us up and down. Whether it be your family or your friends, whether it be the environment, whether it be something you listened to or watched, whether it be a silent moment or a moment when you are excited or someone has called you to share with them something. Our Iman is always fluctuating, my brothers and sisters. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this. He knows this. And He addresses this in the Qur'an. Why does He address this in the Qur'an? So that you don't run away from Him. So that you don't give up on Him. 
so that you don't doubt yourself, so that you don't give up on yourself. He doesn't want you to burden yourself. Listen to what Allah, for example, says to the Prophet ﷺ. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, first received the Qur'an and he felt that he had a mission that was heavier than the mountains upon his back to deliver the message while his own people are going to shun him and kick him out. It was going to be a very, he knows, it's very hard, very, very difficult. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Taha, ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa. Taha, two letters, we don't know their meanings. And then he says, we have not sent down this Qur'an upon you, speaking to the Prophet ﷺ, in order for you to feel misery and hardship and failure, so that you may go through hardship in life, to burden you. We're not sending this down on you to burden you. So don't worry too much. Just go with it and it will guide you. Don't, don't, don't try to struggle and burden yourself over not being able to fulfill what I've commanded you in the best way. You will be able. Don't worry about that. You just do what you have to do. The Qur'an was not sent down upon us to burden us. The Qur'an was sent down upon us to help us and to guide our way. And to when we feel that we think that we are arrogant or we're just going to go to Jannah, no matter what we do, the Qur'an reminds us and gives us a bit of fear. At times when we feel very afraid, the Qur'an comes down to do what? To soften your heart and to make you feel secure again. So the Qur'an, Allah said, for example, in it, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا عِدَّتَهُمْ إِلَّا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيَسْتَيْقِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ وَيَزْدَادَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِيمَانًا Allah said, and we did not make the gathering upon you when the kuffar gathered upon the Prophet as a trial to you for any other reason except for those who have faith to have taqwa and belief and security in their hearts in their faith to Allah and those who receive the book and the scripture so that they may be trialed with what they believe in but the verse which I really want out of this is this part وَيَزْدَادَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Imana, and so that those who have believed in you, O Messenger of Allah, can increase in their iman. The reason I mentioned this verse is what I told you in the beginning: iman rises and falls, and Allah is acknowledging that in this verse. He's telling you, in other words, I know that your iman fluctuates. I know that sometimes you feel closer to me, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're a bit distant. And sometimes you receive trials and hardships. And in those times, I know that your heart is challenged. You may think things that are not right. You may sometimes feel a little bit angry. Sometimes you may get a little bit tired. I know that, Allah is saying. And Allah says, وَإِذَا مَا أُنزِلَتْ سُورَةٌ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ And whenever we send down a surah, a chapter of the Qur'an upon them, some of them say, أَيُّكُمْ زَادَتْهُ هَذِهِ إِيمَانًا Allah says, some of you say to each other, Hey, which one of you was increased in their iman with this new surah that you've heard? You know, when I want you to imagine that you're with the companions and the Quran is coming down bit by bit. And then every time a new surah comes down, everybody rushes and says, Hey, hey, a new surah has come down. And they start to talk to each other like any human does. They say, How does this affect you? Did you get affected by this surah? Has that raised your iman? I feel my iman heightened with this surah. Do you feel your iman heightened? And 
That means again, that when you hear the Qur'an, your Iman rises. And sometimes when you don't hear the Qur'an for a while, you realize that your Iman has diminished a little bit, up and down. And his verse also tells us that the true believers, what is the sign of your Iman? That it's still there. That when the Qur'an is recited upon you, it starts to rise a little bit. It starts to get affected. Every one of us goes through a time where the Iman kind of becomes like a little flame over a candle. And then the Qur'an comes and lights it up again. That's how you know that your Iman is still there. Then Allah says, As for those whose hearts are filled with diseases, فَسَادَتْهُمْ رِجَسًا إِلَىٰ رِجَسِهِمْ When they hear the Qur'an, it just increases their impurity upon the impurity that's already in their hearts. وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ كَافِرُونَ And unfortunately these people, they die while they are still in denial and disbelief. So number one, brothers and sisters, your iman rises and falls. So don't doubt yourself and don't think Allah doesn't know that. And don't think that there's anything wrong with you. Number two, the sign that your iman is still there is that when you're reminded of Allah and when you're reminded of the Qur'an, it affects you. You find that you start to feel peace, you feel, you feel fear, sometimes you feel hope, sometimes you feel a closeness to Allah you can't describe. So long as you have that every now and then, you know that your iman is in there, alhamdulillah, and you can still work with it. But for those who don't feel anything when the Qur'an is recited, maybe once in a blue moon, then they've got diseases in their heart. Why did I say once in a blue moon? Because disbelievers even feel something when the Qur'an is recited because the Qur'an is a powerful effect, brothers and sisters. But the thing is, they don't want it. They don't want to feel that. So they busy themselves with something else to not feel that purity anymore. Like a dirty sponge. You keep cleaning with it, but it won't clean. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is a true hadith. He said, 